Okay, so in this video we're going to look at the trig graphs, all right? Um, so the first one we're going to take a look at is the graph y equals sine x, okay? So this is what the graph looks like, all right? And we're going to just uh, boil it down to three main points that you really, really, really need to, to know, basically. So the first one is to be very familiar with the shape, all right? So this shape here... So it's kind of like a, a horizontal backwards S, if you like. That's the shape here between uh, where 0 and 360 degrees on the x-axis. This shape here is the shape that is repeated again and again and again to give you what's called the sine wave or the sine graph. Okay, so the first thing that you need to be so familiar with is that shape. Okay, and that shape coming from that y-axis looks like this, and that's the shape that repeats. Okay, so what we say is because that is between zero and that there, by the way, is 360 degrees or 2 pi in radians, that is what we call then the period. Because within that space uh, on the x-axis between 0 and 360 degrees, that's the shape that repeats and repeats and repeats. So that's what we call the period. So that's the other thing that's really important to uh, know about the shape. This shape here has a period of 360 degrees or 2 pi, okay, which means that that is the shape between 0 and 360 degrees that gets repeated over and over and over again as the curve continues. The second really important thing uh, to know about the sine curve is where it cuts on the x-axis. So we've already highlighted that that is 360 degrees. Uh, so in other words, if you put in on the calculator sine of 360 degrees, you'll get, of course, zero. And if you would put in sine of 180 degrees, you're also gonna get zero. 180 degrees, remember, is the same as pi in radians. And the other place where it cuts is zero. So in other words, sine of zero is also zero. So it cuts the x-axis at zero, 180, 360. And then, of course, that just repeats. So it continues to cut, and it's cutting every 180 degrees. So it cuts at 0, 180, 360, and then every 180 degrees after that, it will also cut uh, the x-axis. So our third and final point, as I said, the three, real, the three things that you really, really, really need to know or learn off, be really familiar with about the sine curve, is then the range. And what I mean about range is uh, how far it goes up and down on the y-axis, okay? So we can see quite clearly the highest it goes up on the y-axis is 1 and the lowest it goes down on the y-axis is minus 1. So we say the range is between minus 1 and 1. All right, so there's your three key points. Now, the beauty of about boiling it down to those three important points is that when we start to look at all the different transformations on the sine graph, then once we're really familiar with the original sine curve, then it becomes quite easy to make any transformation on it by just knowing your sine curve, your original sine x graph uh, in, in detail, knowing that really, really well. So now we're going to move on to the cos x curve. Okay, so again, we're going to boil it down to three really important points to remember. Uh, and of course, the first one, as we discussed before, is the shape. So this time, the shape is this U shape. That is repeated over and over again. So that is zero degrees, and then this here, by the way, is 360 degrees, or 2 pi in radians. Uh, 
So again, we have the same period as we had with the sine x curve. In other words, within uh, 0 to 360 degrees, that is the shape that gets repeated over and over again. So the shape coming from the y-axis this time is a u-shape. So that's what you need to be really familiar with. And the period is, of course, again, 360 degrees or 2 pi. All right. The second thing then we need to look at is exactly where this curve cuts the x-axis. So the cos x curve cuts the x-axis at, so the first cut is here. And this, by the way, is at 90 degrees. In other words, if you put in cos of 90 degrees on the calculator, you're going to get, of course, zero as the result. OK, 90 is the same, of course, as pi over 2. The other place it cuts the x-axis, of course, is here, which is 270, okay? And again, if you put in on the calculator cos of 270, you will get, of course, a result of 0. And 270 degrees, of course, is the same as 3 pi over 2 in radians. OK, so we're cutting the x-axis at 90 degrees, 270 degrees. And then the next cut, of course, is going to be here. And that is just like that spacing. It is again going to be every 180 degrees after that. That's where it's going to cut uh, along the x-axis. And then our third and final point, of course, is dealing with the range. And the range, of course, is analysing how high it goes up on the y-axis and how low it goes down on the y-axis, OK? So if you look here, we can see our highest point is 1 and our lowest point is minus 1. Very same as the sine curve. So the range is minus 1, 1. OK, so this is the y equals tan x curve, OK? Now, in this one, you won't ever have any different transformations on the tan x curve. So if the tan curve comes up, it's going to come up in this exact form, OK? We're going to have a look with the sine and cos curve, all the different transformations you can get uh, with them. But with the tan x, the tan x on your curriculum can only ever come up in its original form, which is this form, okay? So it's quite easy to spot in that the shape is very different than the other two. And again, that's the first thing you're going to want to, to make sure that you, you're very clear on. So the shape this time, if we're analyzing from zero, uh, from the y-axis, it's coming up like this, and then it's it's coming up from here like this, okay? And that is what's then repeated. That's repeated there, that's repeated there, that's repeated there, and so on. So with this one, the period is between here and here because that's the part of the curve that gets repeated over and over. And it cuts the x-axis here at 180, okay, or pi. So that means then between 0 and 180 is the part of the curve that gets repeated in shape. So this time with the tan x curve, the period is 180. So the shape from the y-axis that you need to be familiar with is it's going like this, and then it's going like this, and then it's going like this, and then it's going like this, and that's the way it repeats. Uh, but the period is, of course, 180 degrees this time because it's within that uh, on the x-axis between 0 and 180 that's the part of the curve that gets repeated. So that's the shape. The second thing that's really important to know of course is where it cuts the x-axis and here it cuts the x-axis at 0, 180 and here is 360 or 2 pi and of course it would be every 180 degrees after okay now there is something else important to note about the tan x curve and that is it has what we call asymptotes 
Okay, so an asymptote is basically a line that the curve approaches but never touches. So there's an asymptote here at 90 degrees or pi over 2. And what that means is if I put in tan of 90 degrees on the calculator, we end up getting a math error. Okay, and the reason we do is because along that line, the curve doesn't exist. In other words, the curve will never touch or cross over that line there, that dotted line that's at 90 degrees on the x-axis. So that's what we call an asymptote. So that's an additional uh, point that's, that's worth remembering about the tan x curve. The asymptotes are at 90 degrees, and there's also another one here. which is at 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2. And every 180 degrees after. So that means that, again, if you put tan 20, 270 degrees on the calculator, you're also going to get math error, because the curve does not exist anywhere along that line. OK? Now, that brings me on to the third uh, and final point that we need to be aware of. And that is the range. Now, this is very different to the sine and cos curves again because the range with tan, well, we can see already that th there doesn't seem to be a maximum value. It seems to continue on, and it does. And the same for the lowest value. That tan x curve continues on and on and on and on and on. It goes up and up. It, it approaches this asymptote but never, never crosses over it or touches it. But it does continue on, which implies then that the range is from minus infinity to infinity, okay? Unlike the sine and cos curves that have a very clear range of minus one and one. Okay, so there are your three important points, all right, that you really want to learn off and know really well. But the good news about the tan, which is a little bit more challenging as a graph, uh, is it will only come up in this very form, in this very original form. So it's very easy to spot. And once you know these three very important points about it, you've got all the information that you need.